I want to just cover again this contract scenario because it was confusing to me in the beginning as to buying and selling something. Remember, we can buy or sell an option, but it was really hard for me to understand how do we sell something we don't even own, right? Because I considered options kind of like buying a car, right? I couldn't sell you my car if I didn't have a car. How could I do that? So that was hard for me to grasp. So the reason we don't have the same problem with options is because options are not a tangible asset. They're not a car. They're not a tangible thing. It's just a contract, it's just an agreement between two parties. Okay, it's one person's betting the stock is going up, and one person's betting the stock is going down. So really, it's just like making a bet with your friend. Okay, if I was betting on a football game, and one of us was taking the Patriots to win, and one of us was betting the Patriots would lose. That's similar to an option contract. It's just two people agreeing. One's a buyer, one's a seller. You could look at this as one believes the Patriots are going to win, one believes the Patriots are going to lose. No difference. It's just basically a bet between two people. In the case of options, it's whether we believe the stock is going up or down, equal to Patriots winning or losing. And again, you can take either side. I can bet whether I think the Patriots are going to win or lose. And I do that depending on how I choose to do my strategy by being either a buyer or a seller. So let's just recap again everything we've learned today. We learned that there's two kinds of options, calls and puts. We learned about option characteristics. We learned that the option equals 100 shares of stock. They expire. Options expire on the third Friday in which the month the option is in. There are multiple time frames, as in multiple months you can buy options in. There are multiple strike prices inside each month's option, what they call chain. There's something called the bid-ask spread, which is the pricing of the option, and we always want to buy or sell it at the mid-price, which is the most fair price. And of course, we have to choose an up or down direction. Options have a directional component. We have to decide whether we believe a stock is going up or down. And finally, the most important thing of all is, options can be bought or sold. We can be a buyer or a seller of any option. And again, the recap on direction. So, if we believe a stock is going up, which I've put in green because most people consider going up as a good thing, we can buy a call or we can sell a put. Conversely, if we believe a stock is going down, we can buy a put or we can sell a call. Accomplishes the same goal. What I also want you to be aware of here is the different terminology because these are all different terms meaning the same thing. So if in the future we talk about buying something or doing something as a debit spread, for example, or going long something, those all mean the same thing. Those all mean buy. Buy equals debit, debit equals long. On the sell side, if we're a seller, if you hear terms like credit or short, also means the same thing. If we're a seller, we can also be doing a credit spread on something or can we, we can be shorting something. Just want you to be familiar with these different terms. So here's what I want you to do. Obviously, we covered a lot of material. Once again, it's just parrot fashion. This isn't about understanding yet. This is just about learning. So go back, review this a few times until it's second nature to you, till all this stuff is in your head and you are comfortable with understanding it. And be comfortable with looking at those different trade pages I showed you. Two different trade pages, two different platforms, not required to be used by you, but it's just easier to show you on those, and that's why I use them.